Greetings, beloved Princeton United Methodist Church community. It's Pastor Jenny here with an update for you. I'm going to read today from Acts chapter 6, verse 7, and I'm reading from the version called The Message. The word of God prospered. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased dramatically, not least, a great many priests submitted themselves to the faith. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. We are wrapping up our Feeding the Flock worship series this coming Sunday, and we are talking this time about how we are fed and how we feed others through partnerships, through our connections um, with one another. And one of the reasons that I am and have been um, and I continue to choose to be a United Methodist is our connectionalism. We are a denomination that highly uh, values our connection. And this comes through in a lot of different ways. Um, Part of it is how we are structured, right? We've got, um, uh, we are a local church that is connected to a, a, this part of a district. We have a district superintendent who oversees our district. And then that district is part of a conference and a bishop oversees that con that conference. And then our conference is part of a jurisdiction and we are um, uh, led by uh, the um, a group of bishops that, that lead that. And then that is part of a bigger United Methodist global <coughs> global denomination. And, and part of the way that this also comes into fruition is we share pastors. We pastors move around in our connection. Um, we also share finances and resources in a lot of ways. We call this shared ministry. And so we um, share funds. So when you give money to our congregation, about a tithe of it, about a tenth of it goes out to um, our conference and to the global church. Some of that is for some administrative things like paying salaries for bishops and, and general chair people for, of different agencies and, and workers in those different places, but it also goes to um, a huge amount, more than the administrative part, goes out to missions. It goes to hope centers locally like the Maker's Place, and it goes to college ministry, and it goes to um, to rebuild um, homes and, and places that have been devastated by natural disasters and humanitarian disasters and all kinds of things like that. So, so every time I um, think about our connection in the world, I am uh, just I'm so grateful because there are relationships that I've had because of the way we are a connectional church. And I know that even though I can't be in all the places around the world, I can help. I'm helping by being, um, by being a giver to my local church and by sharing in this bigger system of things that we are part of. Now, just a quick aside and the kind of the other way to think about a connection, a church that the opposite of a connectional church is a congregational church. Church, and that is where each one of the churches is has a lot more independence um, from it. So in the Methodist Church, we're just more knit together in more uh, close ways. We're not the only denomination that does this, but we that is kind of a hallmark of of our of our um, of our denomination and part of what we do there. So. Um, I would love for you to think this week about um, about partnerships, about how these things work for you, how you and your ministry, um, whatever that looks like for you. I'm not. Um, we are all in ministry, whether we're serving in the choir or we're serving as an usher, whether we go out and do service in our local community. We are all in ministry, and I wonder how your ministry has been enhanced by the connections and the partnerships that you have. Um, and um, one of the things that's happening in the scripture passage that I just read for you is that things weren't actually working very well. There were some holes, there was some brokenness in the, in the body, um, in the church body, and that came to their attention and they readjusted, they realigned things and they, um, they set things up in a new way. They, um, they partnered in new ways with each other so that that thing I read at the end of that passage um, where things started thriving, the word of God spread and people in Jerusalem were all, um, so many were coming to have faith and to be part of the fellowship and, um, and all of those things. So, so God's 
mission, God's vision, God's kingdom is amplified when we are able to connect together. So I wonder what kind of partnerships you've experienced, whether they're personal ones for you or for your, your family, your household, or whether it has been through partnerships that your church has been part of, whether it's Princeton UMC or um, others that you might have been part of too. So that's what we're connecting about on Sunday, and we're going to talk a little bit more about our, our partnerships that we currently have and partnerships that we um, will be having in the future too. There is so much going on in the life of our church over these next uh, couple of weeks, and there's just is a ton. So this coming Saturday, um, there is a yard sale that's happening at the church on uh, in the on the yard in the yard for the Princeton Mutual Aid Society. So this is a partnership that we are um, trying to form a little bit more of. So what we're partnering, our yard is helping to give space to raise money for. Um, uh, in, in people who are in need in our community. Likewise, our children, um, our children's ministry will be distributing brown bags um, around the neighborhood, seeking to collect, partner with our neighbors to connect um, and bring more canned goods in for arm and arm Lots of things are happening Sunday as well. There's a half marathon that's going on, which may make it a little challenging for you to get to church. Don't let that deter you, but remember we also have our online worship that is you're welcome to, to worship um, that way as well. But you might also want to come and cheer on runners on Sunday morning at 745 during worship, we are having our, we're receiving some new members. Some new members are joining the church and we're gonna welcome them. Um, it's also Pledge Sunday. So we want you to bring, you should have gotten in the mail, um, this newsletter with a letter attached to it that came with it and a pledge card. And um, we would love for you to fill out this pledge card, bring it with you on Sunday. There's an electronic version of this as well. You can find that by scanning your phone over this QR code that came with your letter. Um, you can also find it on our website too. Um, but this is the day that we celebrate all of that and the way you partner with our church um, as a whole to make all sorts of wonderful things, um, God's vision for us come to fruition. Uh, the next week, we're having a storytelling event, and um, it's Laity Sunday the week after that, so some of our, our gifted lay people are going to be um, leading worship uh, on the 21st, so lots of good things coming up. I do want to share, you know, one of the things I've been trying to do in these little updates each week is to share a word about our partnership with Kingston United Methodist Church. And this week I'm going to talk for, briefly about membership. So you'll note that with our pledge campaign, I said last week that um, while we are in partnership, these, par these pledge campaigns are really happening in parallel to one another. So they look a lot alike, we're using a lot of the same language and a lot of the same um, pieces, but there are two separate campaigns. And we're, if you pledge to Princeton, that money is going to the Princeton operating budget and the Kingston folks will be pledging to the Kingston budget. Something similar is true at this moment for now about membership. So on Sunday, as we bring members into the Princeton United Methodist Church, they will be members of the Princeton United Methodist Church. Kingston is also starting a newcomers group for the, um, at their congregation, at their campus, um, on Sunday as well. And over the next few weeks, they'll be introducing um, some of their newcomers to the, the Kingston campus, and then they will invite people to be, uh, become members at the Kingston campus. Now, over time, the way these things work may eventually shift, but for now, if you're a member at Princeton, you're still just a member at Princeton. If you're a member at Kingston, you're still there, and so these things are still operating a little bit separately, even though we're continuing to kind of weave ourselves together a little more and more and more. Some people will be wanting to just kind of stay separate, and that's okay. And um, there will be, uh, you know, there, it, there's a lot that we're trying to sort out and work out about how these partnerships really look. So at some point in the future, it may be the case that when you join one of our campuses, you're joining a system instead of just one of the campuses. But we'll get to that um, as we continue to work out what these partnerships this partnership looks like and how all that comes to fruition will become much more clear in the months ahead. Um, but for right now, um, our membership remains separate, just like our finances um, remain separate. 
that doesn't mean that you're not free to to connect and um, and share our uh, our you know you can go visit and be part of the of worship at either campus you can uh, participate in programs that share across campuses that part is is free and open and and much more ready for partnership in those ways I know that you may have questions about all this, and if you do, please ask, and if you need me to clarify things, I will do my best to do that. I know that we're getting tiny little snippets here, but it's what we can do for right this second. So let me know what questions you have, and keep asking, and keep exploring, and I'm so grateful for your willingness to try new things, and to try new partnerships, and to forge our way into new territory together. I'm such uh, so privileged to be your pastor. I am grateful for it every day, and I wish you all the blessings, and I'll remember too, you are enough because God is enough. Thanks be to God.